Good morning. Um, we are here in Show Studio. We're going to be talking about the Carrot Autumn into 19 today. Um, we're in the midst of New York Fashion Week. Obviously, we're all here in London. Um, and this is the last New York panel that we're doing. Um, it's a very interesting band. The Carrot are a um, really hot topic at the moment. Um, they're super experimental and performative. Um, they're quite, also quite a young brand. They started in 2013, so not too many seasons as a backlog. But um, before we kind of start unpicking and discussing their latest collection. I'll let my lovely panellists introduce themselves. I'm going to start with you, Amna. Hi, um, I'm Amna H. Knight, and I'm the co-founder and publisher of independent publication Cause and Effect magazine. Hi, I'm Bella Gladman. Um, I'm a fashion writer. Hi, I'm Rebecca Kincaid, and I'm editorial manager for LNCC. Hi, I'm India Nielsen, and I'm an artist. Fabulous. And I'm Georgie Evans. Um, I'm fashion editor of Show Studio. And before we get cracking with the carer, I just have to introduce Beth Fraser's lovely illustrations behind us. Um, she's adding a illustration for each of the collections. So we've got a carer sneak peek in illustration form behind us here. So thank you, Beth, if you're watching. Um, so very interesting brand, Becara. I think there's lots to talk about um, in the presentation, in the fashion. The, the trio behind the brand themselves are really interesting. But I'm really interested to know um, what you guys feel about the brand and where it kind of resonates with you. Um, and just to kind of familiar ourselves a little bit with where you each stand with Vaquera. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And then we can kind of start going from there. Amna, what do you think? How do you feel? I love the brand. I'm a huge fan of Vaquera. I, I, you know, uh, from my perspective, I think their um, uh, politics when it comes to, you know, gender non-conforming clothes and inclusivity, especially, you know, in previous collections showing a multitude of light bodies um, has been definitely um, uh, something that I, I've really appreciated about the brand. Um, and, I, you know, obviously there's something to be said about, you know, how they've progressed from earlier seasons in terms of the clothes themselves. And I think that you are definitely seeing that w with this one, where there's kind of less of a a little less of a gimmicky um, uh, um, approach, um, but I I do I do love what they stand for more than anything. Yeah. Um, uh, and I love where they uh, um, what they represent. Yeah. And that diversity is something that's really key to them. It, it, as they mentioned in their even in their kind of SEO tagline on Google, is they they're here because of the lack of diversity, and this is a a real push about it. It was a response to lack exactly, of diversity. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I think, I think for, for press, certainly, that's a really inviting tactic. And especially in New York, um, when diversity isn't always um, at the forefront of everyone's noggins. Um, Bella, what do you think about Vaquera? What's your initial knee jerk? I mean, my first thing is that, you know, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of brands out there that kind of are trying to um, either critique or tongue, like, um, play tongue in cheek to a lot of the kind of tropes of fashion or culture in, at large. And I think actually Vaquera seem to have done that in a really incisive way across their collections rather than um, being a little bit um, flippant or glib about it. Um, you know, I think about people like, you know, brands like Jeremy Scott and what he does with Moschino, where um, essentially it's taking something that's kind of a bit trashy um, pop culture and then it's sort of like, here it is in a fashion context. Mm. But I think what they do is a little bit more, um, uh, it's, it's a little bit more biting, especially when you have like the, um, especially in the context of what they do as, um, fashion fan fiction, which is what one of the founders kind of described they do. They, they play the kind of fashion um, institution off against itself, which I think I've really enjoyed and I think it's done with a lot of love mm. rather than um, the meanness that you might expect it to be sometimes. Yeah, mm. I like that. I feel like there's, I love that um, Jeremy Scott comparison because it's so true calling on these really fun, actually one of the looks that's the really fun kind of has that Moschino element is that Tiffany dress, that, yeah. the kind of Tiffany purse dress. Um, that is one of the reasons why we're talking about Vaquera today because it rocketed them um, into the forefront of everyone's not, everyone's, I've got to stop saying, saying noggins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. Everyone's noggins. <laughs> um, so I really like that comparison, but I feel like you're so right in saying there's love here, but also there's a real grit, which mm. I really like. Mm -hmm. um, what about you, India? What's, what's your take on Vaquera so far? I mean, I remember reading one quote that I can't remember who it was. One of the founders was, they weren't talking about the brand, they were talking about why they moved to New York. 
and they said New York is made up of people who are obsessed with New York. And I think that that awareness is really quite interesting and an interesting way of looking at their brand because you get the sense when you look at their clothes that they are just fans of something and mm. they're just... Mm -hmm. um, there's this feeling like they're just making things that they want to see. Um, and I think also their approach to uh, putting the clothes together, it feels like you're looking at characters on a stage rather than um, clothes that are made for a fashion audience. Mm. And I think once you're uh, thinking about, let's say, what a character would wear, how would they move in this outfit, how would they walk, would this make sense for their storyline, it kind of frees you up from uh, any kind of overthinking and allows you to just take, you know, you let your intuition take control, mm. which I think is a really interesting approach. That's really interesting that you say that because I think intuition is so key to the brand and kind of getting a feel and the storyline as well. I'm interested to know your perspective, Rekha, because that storyline, that kind of character narrative must be a real draw for, for LNCC and consumers. Yeah, I mean... I love the Kira, I'm a massive fan, <laughs> and I feel like their clothes, it's not just about clothes, it's about a concept. Mm. Their shows have a message and a narrative, like you say, and a storyline. And I, it's, it's kind of a good example of how fashion can be considered art, and kind of art for artists, and there's a message there, and I think that for LNCC, from an editorial perspective, it's really important for us to have these kind of brands that, you know, do have a strong message and do have um, a strong voice. Mm. And yeah, it's really important, and people love the brand. So do they? Yeah. You, uh, LNCC is one of the very few stockists that actually do have the, the only ones here, right? The only yeah. ones in the UK for sure. Ones I know they're yeah. really popular in Tokyo, um, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, but it is really interesting that. Um, so if you, the, such press hype doesn't always relay into stockists and purchase because we, we love this, I'm getting a general feel, um, that we're quite into this and we love the narrative and, and um, it, it seems really appealing to kind of the fash pack. Um, but I'm wondering about sales. I read an article that was saying something about, um, it was in October 2018 article that was saying that um, all three of them still have day jobs, so they all have to juggle day jobs and a brand. And I'm wondering how, how, despite this being fantastic, how financially viable all of this is? I mean, yeah, if you look back at past collections, mm. uh, not all of it is that wearable. Um, but, you know, you pick up brands for different reasons, mm. and there will be brands that you stock that you know are going to completely sell out, you know, your Gucci handbags or anything like that, and then yeah. other brands you pick up because of its story and because of what it entails and you want to support these young emerging designers and you want to mm. offer something different for your customers. Mm. So, but I, I mean, this show, I think, yeah. is kind of developed the clothing in that way yeah. and I feel like it's becoming yeah. more wearable and I think that they're understanding that they need to, I don't know, it feels more mature in terms of the design. It's elegant, it's beautiful. There's the amazing corset. I just yeah, I feel that was like my that's my favourite look. Mm -hmm. I was like when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's my standout already. Yeah. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we got standouts already. Let's actually yeah. let's, look, let's look at the show because I feel like we're all itching to. Um, so, from from what I can gather, um, it was set in kind of a grand house. Um, Vaquera are really good at picking out amazing <laughs> locations. They've done it in schools and churches and such. Um, and this was something Ukrainian national building. I'm, I'm really awful, that's not a statistic, but... Um, so grand kind of house, leaves strewn on the floor, as we can see. Um, and they were, the trio were saying that this was kind of a reaction to our generation and how we are such homebodies at the moment mm -hmm. and how staying in is the new cool and mm. cl how clubbing is um, kind of a, a real 90s noughties moment and actually our generation 2019 we just like to stay in or have friends around or watch a movie and we're very Netflix and chill and so there's this um, constant pull and pull of that and um, Patrick DiCaprio who's one of the um, designers was saying that he really wants people to go back out clubbing and be more youthful and be more fun and are we kind of betraying our youth by being so fuddy-duddy already and um, then Claire Sully was actually saying well actually you can seek century and 
being at home and that's a safe space. So there's a real duality going on here and I think you can see that in the clothes and the presentation and particularly one of my favourite things about Vaquero is the way they walk. The models have such a tood. They're, they're, um, Oh, we can show a little bit of Instagram, but it's literally like yes, that stomp. A person on a mission, get out my way. Shoulders, shoulders shaking, and I love that. Um, it's it does like a New York though. hustle walk. You can yeah. imagine being like, "Hey, I'm walking here." I'm that walking kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It feels and I, very socially awkward. It does, but also I feel like that's quite a good tone for the brand overall. Actually, it's a little bit of a socially awkward brand in general. It's achingly cool, mm. but also socially awkward. You're but quite in right. In a way that's very self-accepting, though, mm. I think. And that's one thing that I do get from the brand, without wanting to use too many grand terms, um, is this sense of individual empowerment. Because mm. there's a real feeling of um, bootlegging. And, you know, if you don't know how to do something, or you don't, you don't feel included, you can still find your own way um, and make, some, make your own version of something, like the sculptor Tom Sachs. He really wanted to buy a Mondrian, but obviously he couldn't afford one, so he made his own out of gaffer tape. Mm. I really like that kind of attitude towards things. Yeah, and that's, you're, you're just like bang on, that's certainly an attitude they have, and I feel, um, I feel that really connects with Vicaria Patrick, who's self-taught, I think. I think mm -hmm. he taught himself from YouTube, YouTube. and kind of cut and pasting it. He has an amazing um, CV of credentials, kind of working with stylists from Telfar and Acaslata, but that kind of, if you want it, you go out and you create it and you make your own version of it mm -hmm. um, is literally the raison d'etre of Vaquero. I think you're quite right. Actually, interestingly, he taught himself how to make clothes in the same way that Jamie and Giuliano Villani mm. taught herself how to paint, yeah. which is watching YouTube videos in their bedrooms. So we would think and, this is art yeah. with that in mind. But she also made a painting based on one of the Vaquero designs. Oh, really? On the runway. It was called uh, Three Penny Opera last year, based on one of the... Um, I think it was the... It was one of the models who went down the runway with an Amazon Prime bag. Oh, yeah, I know the one. <laughs> yeah. Is it this one? I'm not too sure. That's amazing. That's really amazing that we've got that connection. I think that's such a... Um, Powerful, powerful standpoint, and also a real testament to the brand, actually. I, um, feel like, I was going to say, like the the feeling of like domesticity in a home, and whether Vaquero themselves feel at home within fashion, maybe can link in there. If, you know, if it's if you're, you know, in art, then you'd be an outsider artist. If you're, you know, without outside of like an institutional framework, mm. and like maybe it's being self-taught or you know feeling a little bit at odds with the institution of fashion and like the networks and the the structures of fashion week um and like the bigger uh supply like um stockists and things like that maybe that's another level of like where feeling at home can play in because you can sort of i don't know put put a little pin in the balloon of what feeling at home is like that security when you're slightly outside of it or wanting to be inside but knowing maybe it's not accessible for you um especially if you know vacara are very much like um, a kind of more experimental brand or um so, you know a brand that kind of thrives on the outsider status a little mm. yeah i think you're quite right and it's interesting what you said um rebecca about this being slightly more elevated, slightly more wearable, because you can mm -hmm. definitely see that. And they still have that outsider attitude that you're talking about, Bella, but um, this certainly feels like a real step up for them. Um, and I love all these home references. It's as if they kind of tore down the curtains and the silk bedding and mm. got kind of cabin fever and they're trying to make... Um, I feel like it's children, Victorian children, yeah. <laughs> running around a house and they've got like, they found a box full of costumes and everything's a yeah. bit oversized and yes. they're just kind of going a bit crazy. Mm. But there's like a slight dark undertone with the setting and mm. the leaves and the, it's kind of like slightly eerie. I yeah. feel like Victorian children kind of <laughs> in this big house. Oh, for sure, like haunted dolls yeah, or something yeah. like that. Um, and one, actually, another look that I thought was going to, potentially kind of interesting was the um it's towards the end and it's like a big um oversized cream sweater and then like um big thick woolen stockings and i felt like that either is half and there's that one as well with the um kind of like the belt and the, and the sort of 
like bum bag mm. straps. And I felt like that was really interesting because you have all those like um, premium loungewear brands that do like cashmere tracksuits and, um, you know, like wrap cardigans and stuff that are very, very like sort of, um, sort of yummy mummy. And then <laughs> Vaccaro has done their version that's like, um, like, um, influencer cozy wear, but it's still Vaquera. Um, yeah. I really like how they can do that, and they've got that um, Vaquera-ness, Vaquera quality, but can still kind of riff on the um, like really smooth and luxurious side of fashion as well. Which is almost very New York in a sense. You've got the one side of New York, which is exactly what you're saying, this kind of luxe pajama wear, and then this really um, outsider input is exactly it's exactly what you just said. I'm re I'm re saying what you said, um, <clears throat> but you're quite right. Yeah, I, I really love that duality. It's mm. interesting that it says why on all of like quite a few of the items. Mm. Um, so they're kind of asking a question. Mm. Um, but I, I, I feel like <laughs> as much as I love Vaquera, this is you know. It's, and it's the, their most wearable collection to date, but I don't know that it's my favorite. I feel like I've always kind of expected something out of Vaquero. It's like commentating, you know, the, the, I don't feel like this really um, uh, says anything that I feel like is incredibly important. I feel like, you know, in the past they've, um, you know, uh, had, um, made points about you know, consumerism or um, there was always a kind of political standpoint, whether it was with their costing or whether it was um, with what they put out on the runway. And I don't know, I feel like that message for me personally is a little muddled with the last collection. I don't really, yeah. I, I don't see it. I don't- um, I see what you mean. That kind of homebody or the going out, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, say that to me. What does it say it feels a little confusing but wearable. <laughs> confusing yeah. but wearable. It is, it's confusing to me. Um, there's always been, when we talk about storylines, there's always been a kind of storyline that I've kind of got from every collection personally. Mm. Um, that's really kind of tried to make um, an important point and with this one, I just don't see it. Mm. But I can see it selling better, so where is the, you know, I, I think they're a young brand, so I think they can find that balance, yeah. but I feel like this is, you know, moving towards, you know, the consumer in mind more than past collections. Mm. Um, and that's fine, they are, you know, it's, it's an inclusive black, uh, brand, so I get that, but I'm just kind of losing the message a little bit with this current collection. Yeah, mm. what I felt was, before I, um, understood the reference of staying in and being homebodies and we, we got to get out. I've, the, the soundtrack to this was Phil Collins' In the Air Tonight and then also the Peter Pan um, Second Star to the Right. Uh -huh. And so that, the, also the models are basically children. Um, so I was starting to feel this Peter Pan eternal youth. Um, to me that felt really, that felt like a message of kind of youth and hope and that felt to me like a slight political undertone. Uh -huh. But if, if, because it's such a slightly eerie setting and they're so young, that to, I, before I started thinking, oh, they're in pajamas and they're staying in, I started to feel a little bit of a, a little bit, certainly not the same as last season's by any means, but I do feel like there's a little bit of a, either all this youth as hope or all these kind of trying to, um, trying to keep the youth um, safe and indoors, or I don't know, I mean, yeah. I could literally be clutching at straws here, but um, I started to feel a little bit, you're so right, certainly not the same as previous seasons at all, mm. but I guess it's that, it's that balance that we're trying to strive for always. And as you said, you know, they all still have day jobs and, you know, they're trying to make, um, they, they want to have, um, uh, um, they want to have this brand going for a while and we've seen a lot of fantastic, fantastic brands go under mm. because of lack of finances, lack of money and we, you know, fashion is catered for the consumer, mm. you know, it is and so, you know, when in previous collections when they've, you know, done the, the saints, you know, all the fashion saints and they had um, Marta Margiela and they had uh, Vivian Westwood and I, Vivian Westwood. And I think that they, this was like an idealistic way of looking at when fashion was about the clothes and not mm. about the consumer. And it has to be today. I'm not saying, you know, you, you've got to consider the consumer, but it, you lose the kind of um, the, the magic a little bit. Um, with having to consider that too much. You yeah. can tell over the years they've got a lot better at sewing. Yeah. And I think... Which is fantastic. 
but I think possibly as they're starting to be taken more seriously, they might start to take themselves more seriously. And so they might start to see themselves as just another fashion brand. Like they've made it. That'd be a shame, yeah. That would be a shame. It would be a shame. But some of these looks as well, when you pick, if you took away the, the narrative I'm very heavily trying to push on this brand. <laughs> um, some, for example, the soft um, jumper that kind of turns into suspenders. There's some shirts with bras um, sewn into them. This, if you took away the kind of the care and novelty aspect of it, is beautiful fashion. <coughs> the slightly oversized sleeves and the suspender element. Um, that could be, I'm going to say the row and I'm going to get awful YouTube comments. I'm so sorry. But like, if that had a wide leg trouser underneath it, you would think that was potentially a luxury brand. Or yeah, yeah. some of the shirts, if you pulled that out, it's incredibly, it feels incredibly luxurious. And the, especially the pinstripe shirts, mm. I feel on their own or on the rack are really, really impressive. Are they not street casting anymore? Because they used sure. to use their friends yeah. and they used to street yeah, cast. They, they and see. this doesn't feel, um, in terms of casting, the, the way previous shows have, fe have felt to me. It was wonderful to be able to see different bodies walk down the runway and feel mm. like I, you know, anybody can feel good in those clothes. And that was part of why um, I was so excited about Vaquera. Um, is feeling like, you know, um, no matter, you know, size or, or gender or skin color, you feel like you can be represented um, and feel great in those clothes. But it mm. doesn't feel, or maybe it started with the previous collection. This is what we're looking at, the previous one. I don't know that it, um, this is two seasons ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right in the sense that they used to be water pierced and um, I think Mac there was definitely a diversity in yeah. terms of you know Most not just in terms of like skin color but in terms of you know um, body size and age as well um, and you're so right everyone on that runway is super young and they had older yeah. models in um, in previous collections I think I think they're literally I think they are children yeah um, which kind of feeds into the Peter Pan, yes, yeah, had this, um, Lost Boys, but I had this like um, crazy. Well, I don't know. I've just had this idea that it's it's kind of fairy tales, and then that could lead on from mm -hmm. the Grimm's fairy tales, and it's kind of like the dark aspect of the fairy tales that are trying to give messages to children that to try and like control what they're doing in mm -hmm. like a kind of dark and eerie way, and it's like that undertone of how, like, I don't know, media and mm. politicians are trying to sugarcoat things or try and scare you, maybe, to control people. Yeah. I think it's interesting, because obviously the spring collection was about, was set in a high school, and so mm -hmm. it very felt like all the misfits from high school kind of, yeah. like, coming together, and it was really, like, like, you know, to use a terrific, horrible word, youth quake, but it was very much, <laughs> like, that kind of, like, the power of the youth and, you know, like, schooled out for summer kind of vibe. And then this one is, like, it's got, you've still got the children, but it's like they've been locked away in a tower, um, you know, in, like, a haunted house, like, with nothing around them for a long time, and so they've kind of figured out their own kind of, like, weird rules and energy, and so they're a little bit cosseted and sheltered from mm. what things are, and I, I think maybe that's what Patrick DiCaprio was trying to get at, that mm. actually if you cocoon yourself away and protect yourself, you're also then potentially making yourself, um, you know, you're not um, pushing yourself outside, you're not going outside of your comfort zone. Mm. Um, I think there's a really interesting thing here again about the... Um, like what you would, um, I can't remember who said it actually, but like how everything was like slightly oversized and it looked like they're trying on um, kind of clothes that are a little bit too big for them. And I wonder if that's a concept of like how the youth are um, kind of put into boxes, like simultaneously infantilized, but also like pushed into having to be like total, um, total products. If you look at, um, there's so much conversation about like the kids on YouTube and you know how there's all these um, people and children are being online and exploited earlier because um you know they're creating their own careers but mm. at the same time they you know it's, you're you're far too young at like 13 to like know the ramifications of everything i think there's maybe that's where the tension's coming from mm. they're being simultaneously infantilized but also kind of like put into you know, adult roles. Mm. i don't know that's what i'm getting from this a little bit i like that there's so much narrative that we can yeah. draw from this and yeah. actually yeah. um I wonder if that's um, positive or negative because 
arguably that's what we've been discussing and I, I wonder if that overtakes the clothes a little bit and mm. I was actually thinking about you know who we could see wearing this like in the sense that um, I feel it would be really interesting to you like you know get like the um, Yara Shahidis or the like, Rowan Blanchards or the Amanda Steinbergs of the world, world in Vaquera. Um, like maybe I really want to see it on other young celebrities that are kind of um, defining um, what we think youth is. Um, and because it feels very kind of like y young but also very um, kind of edgy as well it's like that kind of like the scariness of youth mm. um i don't i don't know what what do you guys think where, where can you see this being worn i would have loved to see someone wear it to like the grammys or the yeah. baptists oh for sure one of the big dresses mm. maybe not the giant gift but um some of the long white looks or perhaps the pink um silk one mm. I, th I think i do think um i mean they would have been slandered but that one with the kind of mullet shape at the bottom, I think is actually quite, quite stunning. And mm. I would love to see a really, someone pioneering, someone young, someone beautiful wearing it at the mm. BAFTAs or the Grammys. I think it'd be amazing. But I don't know, is that what Vaquera wants? Is that what they're... Yeah, that's what I mean, that's not really their modus operandi, yeah. the, um, celebrity dressing. Um, I think if that were to happen, then they would just be contributing to that fetishization of the youth. Mm. I think eventually they would just become subsumed by the mainstream and they would inevitably lose their attitude, I think. And mm. Everything that I think people seem to value about them and makes them stand out and be different. So I think they, it's, it's kind of difficult because they need to try and maintain their outsider position, mm -hmm. but also be viable as a brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's tricky. It is. it is tricky. I also wanted to ask a little bit because we mentioned that they had Margiela on the shirts from previous seasons and they do um, say that Margiela is a huge um, reference point for them. Mm -hmm. And they have been called out by Diet Prada quite a lot in <laughs> the past. Um, oh yeah, we can have a look now. Um, over, I think there's like three or four pieces that Diet Prada have called them out on. Um, but because they have this label of fashion fan fiction, um, where do we think the line kind of comes? I personally have a feeling, have a belief that when a brand is um, young and starting out, it's maybe not the best to cross-reference them with a huge powerhouse like Chanel. But at least they're being very transparent about it. Yeah. At least, you know, they're citing their references right there for everyone to see. It's not yeah. like a subtle, um, what's it called? It's not just a kind of copycat. Um, mm. I, I think that that's uh, refreshing because everyone copies. There, there are no real original, you know, um, ideas. Like everyone, it, it's all being recycled, but they're being really um, upfront about it and transparent about it, which I really appreciate. Mm. Um, but that's also what they trade off of as well. I mean, they probably fetishized these big fashion brands when they were younger. Yeah. And they're making their own versions of it. That's. Fantastic. Exactly the point. They're yeah. making fan fiction for these brands. Mm. Mm. I think, yeah, like, I, I do sort of sometimes feel like, you know, Diet Prada is great in terms of, like, knowing the references and, you know, you do learn historical references from them. Mm -hmm. I do feel perhaps that um, it slightly shuts down or, um, especially when it's a young brand like Vaccaro and then comparing it to, like, something that's like a, you know, 80s heavyweight is, you know, perhaps a little... Um, it's sort of, it's, it's shutting creativity and not in the sense of original creativity, but like mm -hmm. um, creative repurposing or a creative um, outlook down. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm not, I'm not the hugest fan of Diet Prada's kind of, um, that something can be similar and then it's automatically a copy. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite like a, um, it's, it's like a straight, it's a straight up negative critique and I actually think there's, a, there's some interesting discussion to be had that's outside, oh well that's a copy so it's not worth talking about, like that there's only one original thing. I think it, you know, if we're talking about like Volta Benjamin and like the art and the age of mechanical reprodu reproduction, like basing everything on the original is so outdated as to be completely, mm. you know, it, like irrelevant, especially in the digital age. I, I, I just feel like the way that they critique is 
very, um, very one note. Um, it doesn't allow for like multiple different interpretations. I, I actually agree with you completely. And if you're going to be calling out brands, why are you, you know, you were saying, especially them being a young brand, why go after them to begin with, you know? Go after the corporations, go after Gucci, rightly so, for doing a black face baklava, yeah. you know? Mm. Or it's, I just feel like going after young designers that are trying to contribute something um, interesting in a world that's so, in, a, in, a, in the fashion world that's kind of so saturated with, you know, c consumers and, and whiteness and um, uh, I, j I just feel like you're gonna go after these guys, you know, it, it's... Um, Do you think on some level, Diet Prada knows that it's got a platform and it's got a voice uh -huh. and that if they put Vakira on Diet Prada, then Vakira's gonna reach millions of more people than oh, it that's would interesting. Yes, yeah. in another that's way interesting... and that because they kind of had the same value more publicity like, is good publicity exactly there isn't anything as like yeah there's no mm. such thing as bad publicity so yeah. perhaps they're doing that in a way to support these small brands yeah, i don't know that that was intentional <laughs> but it, you know but do you think it could have been intentional i don't know yeah. it's a question and then there's the question yeah. of are gucci now paying them to put the Balakava post up because they've never spoken about Gucci before and the integrity of Diet Prada. Like, I mean, it's a huge platform for any brand to be uh, placed on. So mm -hmm. they know that if they go on to uh, Diet Prada, they're gonna get so much promotion from that. And I just hope that the integrity of Diet Prada, it, I hope that they're still being, like they have integrity and they're not kind of mm. being paid by big brands to, make up these stories. I don't I know, that's really so cynical. But. When you're being called out for racism, I think that's when all publicity is not good publicity. So I, I highly doubt that Prada and Gucci would be paying them to do that. But I do I think that's quite yeah. an interesting idea. I don't know, it's, you know, fake news. And they didn't post about Gucci no. at all before. And I don't know, maybe I'm being um, pessimistic. <laughs> <laughs> And people got very cynical in our old age. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all the fake news. I, think, I know. I think. I suppose the point about um, kind of Vaquera and is, like you said, like they're paying homage to these brands that you know have excited them and they fetishized in their in their youth, and that's not something that Vaquera's said. Oh, we're you know we're creating this all from scratch, and these are all our ideas. Like their like their whole thing is that they're critiquing and mm -hmm. um, repurposing and collaging different kind of like social movements and also shapes and ideas and that's something they trade on like you said um it seems a bit silly to critique someone for something that they literally said they do mm -hmm. yeah i don't know um oh, i agree but um yeah i think like sorry just about that tiffany um the tiffany bag and stuff like you know that mm. obviously felt like it linked a little bit to the kind of critique of like that upper east side kind of um lady who lunch in the pals and the twin set but then also the kind of like the mark jacobs ad campaign with vb sitting in the bags which then she did herself to like you know riff off that mm -hmm. you've got you had that amex dress which is like the paco rabanne kind of chain mail mm -hmm. thing but it had that extra um kind of like tongue-in-cheek biting point of kind of um, consumerism things like that mm -hmm. so you know it's not like they've been really subtle about what they're inspired by they're yeah. quite yeah, they've been sure. transparent yeah, yeah. And we appreciate that yeah. um, actually you saying that is really maybe think that you're this is such a where's the where's the where's that punch and grit here mm -hmm. we're really missing that you're so right i'm just thinking about what you said earlier we're really miss where's that kind of um slight tongue in cheek where's that slightly mm. comment on consumerism or I mean, I, it doesn't have to continue to be, you know, no. those are, those are um, themes that they've, you know, worked with in the past, and that doesn't mean that they have to continue, um, uh, but, but, it, it, but it, it is missing something. I feel like we're, we're scrambling here for a message, and there are so many different um, narratives that you can get out of this one collection, mm -hmm. and that's, that's lovely. I mean, it's open to interpretation, mm -hmm. but they have been always very... Um, 
maybe maybe too literal in the past. So maybe yeah. this isn't so literal. I and mean, they, but they have been. And so I was expecting something that was a little bit more yeah. Yeah. Um, in your face because they, it has been. Um, and maybe that's exciting that it's not so um, in your face and not so literal. Mm -hmm. I just didn't really um, understand uh, the message yeah. that they were. Um, I, I just see. Um, wearable clothes, and that's also exciting for them as a brand. Mm -hmm. And again, I think, um, not to repeat myself, but I think they will find that balance. Yeah. Um, they are, there are, I would imagine, not I would imagine, I still think they're at their infancy, and I think that there's still room to grow. Mm. Who's on there? Yeah, I know, I'm just trying mm. to figure out who's on that t-shirt. Mm. Yeah, I can't. It looks like a Is there a zoom function? Is, is that Michelle this. Obama in the corner? I feel like that's... Maybe. Yes, you're right. Mm, it looks like one of those... Because that's one thing they've always done is reference kind of like pop icons. Yeah, yeah sure. popular icons. And um, There's someone in black and white there as well. I'm not sure who that is. Ooh, I think be I see. Icons. Who was, the, who was the, 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 the chef that went to jail? Oh, Martha Stewart. I think I see her. So... Oh, yeah, you're right. There is Martha Stewart. It's kind of like female, um, amazing female characters. I think that's somehow that's it's rad. I, well. I like that T-shirt. I really like that T-shirt. Yeah. Um, that's definitely going to sell. I can see that on I'd buy everyone that. everywhere. I would buy that. Let's see. What's on it? I think it's really interesting what you said about like um, maybe this collection losing its sort of political bite mm -hmm. in a way. Because um, you, you have people like um, Pia Marcy, like Kirby Jean Raymond there, who's Love. you know has like you know started with a strong, strong message mm -hmm. of um, you know with police brutality um, and, and then depression yeah. and and all of that That's stuff. Health, and, it, and yeah. he has like doubled and tripled down on it and stayed very true to that while he's also then got um, you know progressed, become wearable, and, you know, really Agreed. kind of, um, like, springboarded. Like, have, has anyone seen the uh, Whoopi Goldberg and yes. Pia Moss oh, it's images? Fantastic. It's which so are, like, beautiful. super, super fun. And so that's an example of another New York brand who's kind of come from that same, like, kind of outsider perspective mm -hmm. who has kept that and lent into that as a the springboard for their future success. Yes. And Vaquera, obviously, are kind of taking a kind of slightly different route here, perhaps going towards more, maybe toning their toning their bite down in order to appeal. And um, yeah, it's, I guess it would be worrying if they lost their vicariousness. I still think there is a sense of vicara, but yeah. it's not as mm. it's not as strong. I, I yeah. also feel it's um, we're slightly losing s some of the kind of magic energy because mm -hmm. mm. we're looking at static. And I mean, we do have Instagram videos, but it's that it's that aggressive walk and the blaring of kind of Peter Pan and. The, that whole vibe, I feel like when you're there, you, you would get entranced in this magical moment. And um, I think that's still very much a draw and an, you're part of this. Um, there's, I feel like the sense of community is slightly lacking from this season. Mm -hmm. um, but you are still kind of drawn into this world and this high energy. And I really love that the clothes are, to me, they feel really elevated this season. Mm. And I, I love that. Lawful good. No, there was a repeat of the engagement ring, and I have a feeling it was it, the uh, yes. And then they had it on one of the um, on one of the looks as well as yeah. a patch. Mm. Um, and so this again doesn't. I, I, I don't. I can't make sense of that with the. Yeah, what are they trying to say? Sure, um, <laughs> because it's repeated, and I think that little yeah, bum yeah. bag situation. I think that is a little engagement ring on there too. I mean, I don't know if we can. Um, you know that great look that when you said the turtleneck could have been the row. Yes. Um, there, I think that that was a little um, engagement ring, um, or maybe no, maybe I'm seeing things, or maybe I'm making it up. But It'd I just don't see how that was. plays into yeah. into this. Obviously, it's a reoccurring um, um, symbol, or you know. But what does I it quite like. I quite like that whole. That feels very like breakfast at Tiffany's, like the yeah. kind of rock. Um, sure. Walking around Manhattan. Yeah, isn't that? It looks like a jewelry yeah, purse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be. I like that idea though that it's that's kind of this quintessential New York diamond breakfast. But it's also moment. like a chastity belt. So, yeah. <laughs> which is, I, which I guess maybe is that for Kara. Um, oh, you know, you're um, you're engaged. You're like, you know, you're locked down, but then also you're locked down because mm -hmm. you're literally betrothed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Which feeds into that whole story again of kind of being indoors, outdoors, this kind of moment of 
security in this moment mm. and trying to push yourself out. But I mean, how many of them? I, 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 it was one of them that's left, right? So the collective is three of them yeah, now. Yeah, so there's three of them. So, and you know, you them. are getting three very different perspectives in one collection. Um, somehow they, it's always um, felt um, uh, um, like one. It never felt like three separate um, ideas, but you are getting a little bit more of that with this one, maybe. Yeah. Um, it was, in the past, um, the three perspectives have always ended up being really cohesive. Mm. Um, but I have a feeling um, with this one, there may have been some like, no, this is what I want to do, or this is what I don't know. I mean, I, 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 because it, it is where we're coming up with very different um, storylines here, and, and that could have been the result of the three of them um, not yeah. butting heads, but. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah, the message has sort of been diluted by trying to appease three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting, yeah, because the, they were each saying kind of different aspects of what they were trying to get at with this whole home space and clubbing, yeah. clubbing vibe. Um, I'm interested to talk about Vakara in the context of we're quite familiar with this kind of performative element in London and lots of shows. Mm -hmm. um, Charles Jeffrey actually referenced um, Peter Pan, but more in a kind of lof, Lost Boys community sense. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really interested to talk about Vaquera in contrast to London. And if this was showing in London, would, we, would, we, would it be turning as many heads? I think it has a real pull and it is quintessentially New York. And also because it is so um, interesting and, and creating a complete different scene in New York. But if this was... If this was London, if this was British, how would we feel? Is this, is, would it be as attention grabbing? No, not at all. Yeah, you know, like, this is, like, I feel like if this was in Fashion East, then, I'd, like, then it would be the kind of the boring part of Fashion East. Yeah. And I mean that only in the nicest way. I Agreed. Just, like, because you have the most kind of, like, fantastic, and it's so energetic. It's like some of, like, the, you know, the, like the London designers, you know, you've got like your, um, like Supriya Lely, or like you've got Charles Jeffrey, or... Asai. Um, yeah, Asai, and they're so kind of like energetic and zingy and kind of um, that kind of, I uh, like acid edge mm. to, um, to youth. And then this, it, um, this collection particularly, I don't think it would have stood out as much. It's great for New York because New York Fashion Week has always kind of been considered as more like business instead of, you know, creativity. Mm. Um, I, so I feel like brands like this, Telfar, Eckhaus Lata, and they're all kind of connected by yeah, um, a, the stylists, I believe, and they've all interned or um, so there is that connection. And so it's um, refreshing to get this from New York, but it, nobody would look twice here in London because it's um, London Fashion Week isn't, um, it doesn't feel as kind of business minded as mm. New York Fashion Week does and always has. Do you feel... Or has for a while, at least. Yeah, do you feel like, do you, do you feel like the narrative would carry a little, a little weight? But actually, as I've said that, so many brands in London have such political messages and narratives and are pushing. Mm. So actually, yeah, potentially it would get lost in the sea of London. I think what London Fashion Week can take from New York Fashion Week and with brands like this is costing. I think that they are... Um, definitely showing more diversity than any other fashion week mm. um, uh, and again and um, I think that that's something that London can definitely take more of I know that London's um, casting has become more diverse but I see it happening brands like Gypsy Sport is mm. fantastic Chromat mm. you know there are um, Eckhaus Lata but I'm biased because I love them <laughs> um, but you know they don't um, they don't disappoint season after season with you know not just their clothes but with their choice of casting yeah I mean Gypsy Sport is iconic um, when it comes to their casting and, and their message as well, obviously. But I think that that's something London could definitely take on, yeah. that New York has, uh, I think, um, definitely. Um, it feels really organic in New York, whereas sometimes yeah. I feel like when um, London designers- it's forced or tokenized. It's forced yeah. or tokenized, yeah. And there's very few brands who Agreed. I can genuinely say it feels organic to them in London. Um, and it's the, yeah, it's the same kind of girls in London a lot. So it's like, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna be a bit more diverse and it's like the same kind of like roster of about maybe seven or eight faces. Um, but when you have, um, yeah, like for Karen Gypsy Sport, Chroma as well, like mm -hmm. you said, Colleen Estrada, like they, it feels like they feel really fresh in like the, yeah. the kind of faces, the kind of bodies you get to see there. 
um, uh, I've, I mean, I, I guess with London, you've got that kind of like the um, the designers are particularly creative, but, but maybe the casting agents um, <laughs> are, are less so. I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it is probably a clashing of loggerheads a lot in London. To yeah. Be sure. um, yeah, it definitely is the same faces that you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So something to be learned from Vakoa for sure. Mm -hmm. So what would we like to see? What 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 growth do we want? What's for next season? Um, they were up for CFDA last year, but they got nipped to the post by Telfar. Do we want awards? Do we want more recognition? Do we want red carpet? What kind of thing do we want to see from Vakoa? I'd like them to keep up with this level of execution mm -hmm. on the pieces. I think that's going to only in terms of in terms of business, I think that's only going to do them, you know, like do them as like a massive strength. Um, like I think we've all mentioned that, you know, um, and you said that like they've literally got better at sewing, and I think that's really, um, really important. And you know, when they're on on the rack next to um, like other brands, you know, they really like keeping with this level of execution is going to really make sure they hold their own, um, are like on a rail. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to get that kind of bite back, like you said. Yeah. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, no, I completely agree, I think. A bit more bite. Yeah, a bit more bite, <laughs> but I like the way that they're developing the... It, it, I don't know, it just feels really elegant and really beautiful, and I think it's sellable, mm. and I think that's going to help, but, yeah, there definitely needs to be that element of, yeah, the bite and the political mm. aspect, and it needs to have a bit more of a narrative. Mm. Mm. I think it may have just been that they wanted to prove that they could make sellable clothes with this mm -hmm. collection. Because I do think that if you, if there's an expectation that you're always going to be aggressive and political, then it becomes rehearsed, and it also, it, it kind of just becomes a style. Mm -hmm. And it st you still lose the message, but then you have the impression that you're still doing something politically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a mixed bag from us today <laughs> on Vaquera. Um, love the clothes, but a little bit more bite next time, please, if you're watching. Um, thank you guys so much for taking part. Very lovely to have you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks.